Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning for Latin America. Uh, welcome to this battery trading. Uh, today is the first session of a total uh, amount of five sessions this week, so it will be a very interesting week. Today we will start with some uh, market overview and also with uh, what kind of options there are within batteries in the, in the broad uh, overview. Uh, the rest of the week will be a deep, deeper dive into uh, technologies of, uh, of the batteries. So that will be very interesting to <coughs> have them all in, I think, uh, uh, to see all the presentations. Uh, today I will explain the agenda for, uh, for this session. Uh, we have different speakers today. And after all speakers, you are able to ask questions. Uh, and that will be moderated by my colleague Sasha. Uh, before we start introducing the agenda and the speakers, a little bit about Solutions Plus and also a little bit about my company, FIA. Uh, I think everybody is aware of what Solutions Plus is. We are very uh, into a, a, a large consortium of 40 different organizations. In our case, we work very close together in a work package which is called uh, matchmaking and uh, uh, business models development, which is work package three in all together. And our role within this project is a project manager for that work package. Uh, FIA uh, Automotive and Mobility is also into the matchmaking process. So we try to have the right connections for, for example, the local innovators in the, in the whole consortium together with the right technologies. And in this case today, we focus on batteries. So we have two speakers from the battery provider uh, organizations, uh, which is uh, Batteries and Swobby. And they will present later about their solutions and about the part of the batteries they are in. A little bit about FIA and some of our projects. Yeah, we are one of the partners with the Solutions Plus. It's very interesting uh, working together with, for example, Uweni, Wuppertal Institute as the regional teams, and also with Etigo on the, on the local innovators calls, and with a lot of other organizations within the whole project. We also focus, for example, in other projects on heavy duty, like electric trucks, so uh, where batteries are very important, because one of the things of very heavy vehicles is that the range is enough to also drive more than uh, 50 kilometers, in most cases more than 150 kilometers. Then we are involved in charging in all kinds of projects and also in the future about charging. So we do a lot of projects about what would be the best options to charge uh, for not only heavy duty vehicles, but also smaller and passenger vehicles. And we also look already into the future, which is more towards having the vehicle included in the energy system which calls vehicle to grid uh, uh, integration of the batteries into the system. So that is also for the battery side interesting. And I think you will get also more information in the whole trainings about what would be the battery degradation about uh, if you use it also for the energy systems. And then last but not least, we also have an observatory which is focusing currently on Europe. And uh, there you see all kinds of data about the progress and the uptake of uh, electric mobility and also the incentives and the policies of all the European countries around it. But that's a little bit more of, uh, from our projects. If you look at today, uh, this is the agenda for today. So we will start with Lydia from Etico. She will explain what is the startup incubator. Then my colleague Ryan will explain uh, about the battery options. She gives an overview. Uh, not the big and the technical details or for the rest of the week, but just an overview of what is going on into batteries. Then we go into two cases, uh, one from batteries, the case of batteries, and one from Swabi. So that's Nuria and Sina who are also in the call. And after those presentations, you will have uh, the possibility to ask your questions. Well, that's it from my side from the introduction. Uh, maybe we can now switch to Lydia from Etico, who will explain a little bit more on the startup incubator. Thank you, Edwin. Um, so I will share my screen now. Okay, great. So hello, everyone. Um, I am Lydia and I work for Ertico and I will be explaining uh, what the incubator program is about under the Solutions Plus project. Uh, this incubator uh, program that we sorry did someone 
Okay, so this is in this incubator pro program uh, that um, is under the Solutions Plus project comes from our own Ertico uh, incubator program. So in Ertico, we work with uh, startups uh, in a, let's say, normal basis. Uh, we have activities with them and we prepare an incubator program uh, to help them in their journey. So in this program, we have, uh, we do different activities that I will also explain in the um, following um, slides. So what is this incubator program based on? It rests in three pillars, the three pillars that you can see in this slide. So the first one is connect, the second one is innovate, and the third one is grow. Um, the connect pillar focuses on fit for use, uh, connecting SMEs and startups with relevant stakeholders to make sure a strategic partnership and cooperation can be set in place and identifies the supporting incubator actions to assure on time and quality deliveries. For the Innovate Pillar, it focuses on key services offered by the incubator, for example, building competences, uh, expertise, and knowledge optimization. And the last one, Grow, focuses on business development and scaling up, both uh, geographically and in terms of portfolio. So in this case, um, for this year under the Solutions Plus project, the activities that we are going uh, and have been focusing under these three pillars are going are the following. So for the first one, for Connect, is going to be matchmaking sessions. For the Innovate one, is going to be the training. And for Grow, it's going to be visibility. So now I will explain a little bit more what these activities are going to be about. So for the first one, Connect, I think it is quite clear. So Connect with networks. In this case, uh, Connect with partners that have relevant knowledge that the uh, different startups can gain uh, benefits from. So we will do matchmaking sessions with this with different stakeholders. Then on the second one, the innovate um, pillar, uh, here comes the innovation management training. So this training not only uh, grows into this innovative pillar, but also is uh, transversal for the three of them. So for connect and grow, because we have prepared a training uh, that will support the startups in the whole journey. So from the business uh, model that they have, but also with their uh, pitching abilities and uh, also how to enter market. So we have prepared a complete training that will help them out um, uh, with, their, with their business uh, from, let's say again, their plan until the last uh, growing part of it. So the deployment and uh, growing phase. Uh, there are five modules with different sub-modules and we will also have a graduation where they will showcase the learnings that they have been, um, that they have acquired uh, and they will pitch uh, in front of different stakeholders that we will invite. Then on the last one, uh, GROW. So in here we have two different activities. One of them that it also uh, it's included in the training is the public funding opportunities. We will um, let them know what are the public funding opportunities that are uh, of course out there and including of course the EU funded projects such as uh, Solutions Plus. Um, and then the other uh, GROW activity that it focuses a little bit more on visibility is the special interest session that we have prepared uh, for the ITS European Congress that is happening in Toulouse this year. So through a one minute pitch video, uh, the startups will be able to talk with the audience that in this case are experts in the ITS field. Uh, again, for the visibility and this uh, for the growth of the startups. And with that, I finish uh, the presentation of the incubator. If you have any questions, as Maria Rosa already mentioned uh, before, and Edwin, uh, please uh, put them in the Q&A uh, section. Thank you very much. Okay, Lydia. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask it afterwards also to Lilia. And if you're interested to join the ITS in the Toulouse as a startup to do your pitches, uh, please also send uh, or me an email. 
so that we can organize that uh, further on. Uh, now I want to give the floor to my colleague uh, Ryan Safari, who will explain to you a little bit more on battery options and uh, content around it. So Ryan, I'm sure that you are in the call. Please uh, give us your presentation. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we are going to talk about battery, uh, but in a general setting. So first of all, we will uh, have a quick look about the batteries itself. And in the second part, we will talk about batteries in practice. Um, there, are, uh, there are different uh, factors that uh, influence the efficiency of batteries, like the distance you travel, the weight of the car, the way that you do the route planning, the, the um, driving behavior, and temperature. And uh, there are different factors related to battery characteristics, like the vehicle size split, the battery energy density, the battery size, battery chemistry, and cost, which will be discovered more uh, during this presentation. A period of uh, 800 was the golden period of, for the EVs since the lead acid batteries has been invented. The technology of battery is one of the key in electric vehicles. Many countries such as America, Japan, Germany have launched a special project to improve the performance of batteries. As you can see in this, um, and in this uh, slide, uh, first, it was lead acid batteries and then nickel based acid batteries came to the picture. Nowadays, we do have lithium based batteries, and in the future, we will have lion, uh, lion air batteries and ultra capacitors. As I mentioned, batteries are the energy storage system and uh, also depend on the vehicle. If it's all electric or plug in hybrid, the battery type may differ. Currently, batteries are designed for extended life, typically to up to um, 100,000 miles, and they have the uh, life has been 12 to uh, 15 years in a moderate climate or 8 to 12 years in extreme climates. Lead acid batteries are the oldest rechargeable battery, the most uh, traditional, preferred, and performance uh, proven. Nickel-based batteries is come with NICD and NIMH, and lithium-based batteries are the most dominant and fast-growing battery chemistry in the market. Li and ultra capacitors, uh, it belongs to the future, and they are not uh, yet ready to be used in the market. Uh, the five main components of a battery, especially in Lion batteries, are uh, cobalt as a um, um, cathode and nickel, which is also a which can be replaced. Um, the, which no, the nickel can be replaced by um, cobalt can be replaced by nickel because it's uh, cheaper than nickel. And uh, we do have uh, manganese and uh, graphite and silicon as uh, anodes. Uh, graphite's also a time-consuming and costly uh, component, which will be replaced by silicon, which is uh, less expensive and uh, less time-consuming to um, have. The most lion battery use significant uh, amounts of expensive metals like cobalt, and in the future, they are um, lowering amount of cobalt and using a um, higher quantity of uh, cheaper sub, uh, substitutes like nickel and manganese. And now uh, let's also compare the different type of the batteries uh, to see what are the pros and cons. Lead acid batteries are by far the cheapest energy storage technology with regard to the raw material cost. Because of the low energy density, lead acid batteries are the choice when operating distance and weight are less important and a low price is crucial. The advantages of lead acid batteries are the low material cost, safety and high recycling codes. However, there are some concerns regarding the energy density, environmental issues, and high rate. Nickel cadmium batteries uh, have a higher energy density compared to uh, lead acid batteries, 
but they are more expensive and uh, in the case of accidents they are safe but from the ecological point of view the usage of cadmium is critical and that's the uh, time that NIMH uh, or nickel metal uh, batteries uh, come to the picture because uh, they um, they are um, some sort of similar to nickel cadmium but without toxic uh, cadmium and the advantage of the battery is also they can uh, have a deep temperature performance uh, and um, they have a almost double energy density than nickel cadmium batteries. Uh, the lithium ion batteries is an umbrella term for a variety of material combination used for the per, uh, in the batteries. Their characteristic regarding the power, lifetime, low and high temperature performance and safety are very dependent on the material combination. The energy efficiency is also very high compared with the previous one. Another advantage, uh, it's, also the, um, it's also the high capacity utilization, but the cost, uh, it's uh, really high. So that's one of the reasons that uh, it's, not, uh, it's difficult to be used in a mass market. Li-I and uh, supercapacitors, uh, they belong to the future uh, because Li-I can um, help more energy in a smaller and um, high, in a smaller size cells compared to previous and uh, previous one. Uh, but the challenges are the number of the cycles, the safety, and the lifetime. The ultra capacitors compared to lithium ion batteries is the uh, they can um, quickly charge and discharge, but they cannot uh, keep um, lots of um, energy. So they will need to charge and discharge super rapidly. Uh, but because of uh, their ability uh, to charge and discharge qu quickly, they can also be used as a wireless charging batteries. Now we have an understanding of what uh, different type of uh, batteries available in the market. Let's look, uh, take a look uh, at how batteries um, work in practice. We do have two different type of uh, charging options, AC and DC. The AC charger, it's in the home charging or the public charging, but there are the low uh, charging option, while the DC chargers are the fast uh, charging power. With the DC charging power, you can uh, top up your battery from 20 to 80 percent, approximately 40 minutes. And uh, even you can have more ultra fast charging a station. And as you can see, there are so many different charging plus available around the world. Uh, the, another way to reuse or uh, recharge a battery is using a modular battery. A modular battery is a battery pack that has been designed to work in a tandem with other battery pack of the same specification. By introducing or reducing batteries in a modular set, you will be able to fulfill your power requirements without being limited to the set of capacity or voltage. The main advantage of a modular battery is that it's easy to replace. If one of the models if, uh, fails, you can directly replace the model instead of uh, scrapping the entire battery system. Another great advantage of the modular battery is the heat dissipation. With a good battery management system, modular batteries will dissipate heat much better than a single large battery pack. The second way of uh, recharging battery is uh, battery swapping. Uh, this chart sh uh, showing and comparing the two different type of the EGA scooters, one of them with the battery uh, swappable and another one, the charging one. As you can see, you can uh, use the swappable batteries uh, up to 300 kilometers while you have uh, two batteries and you will swap it during the day but uh, you only can ride 160 kilometer with the e-scooter because uh, e-scooter needs almost six hours in between to be recharged. Let's also take a look uh, uh, to the finance and compare the uh, purchase price of these two e-scooters 
as um, as it shows here, it's super expensive to buy the. It's more expensive to buy the swappable uh, ES scooter, while the cost for energy is almost the same. So it really depends on uh, on your business to go for one of these options. If you have um, the kind of business that requires a ES scooter to run the whole day. Uh, probably it makes uh, sense for you to invest on swappable um, ES scooter, but if you only have a need to use yeah, ES scooters during the limited uh, hours during the day, so the e-charging ES scooter is, uh, is still a good option. This video shows uh, quickly how does it work in reality if you have a swappable um, ES scooter. Uh, and the third uh, way of uh, reusing the uh, battery is second life battery. After using uh, 10 years of the battery, that battery typically lost the material and can uh, and then uh, it also lost the capacity. Uh, at that point, uh, you can uh, um, repurpose or um, repurpose. Uh, it means that use the pack as it is. Uh, or refurbish uh, means that pack is first disassembled and single cells are reconditioned and packed in a new do in new models before before used in a stationary application. Uh, and after uh, a period of time, when also the capacity is lowered, then it's time for recycling the battery. So we have the first life of the battery and then the second life of the battery. And then the last part, it's about the recycling the battery. Uh, this uh, scheme comparing and showing a different type of uh, e-vehicles in terms of the capacity and voltage rate and also showing if uh, they are available in swappable uh, version. As you can see, the cars, it's a question mark, uh, which is uh, which it means that it's still under development. Uh, but you can have the option swappable uh, e-bikes, uh, different scooters, and for trucks and bus is still not uh, available. So thank you uh, for listening, and I want to give the floor to uh, Edwin. Yes. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, very interesting as an introduction, and I'm sure that the rest of the week you will get more details about all these kinds of options in, the, in batteries. Um, I want to give now the floor, I think it is first Nuria Gonzalez Garcia from Batteries, and she will explain a little bit about uh, what the uh, own market uh, uh, solutions is, uh, including, of course, the Second Life electric uh, batteries to accelerate the transition to renewables. And after her, uh, Swabi will be uh, presenting. But first now, Nuria Gonzalez Garcia. Hello, everyone. Hope you can see me and hear me. Yes, yeah, we see we you, see Nuria. You. Okay, and you see my screen, right? Yes, also. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, thanks for inviting Batteries to this very interesting uh, training. As you mentioned, I'd like to introduce you our company, Batteries, which is a German startup. We sit in Berlin. The company was founded in 2018 with the aim of reusing or repurposing electric vehicle batteries coming out of those vehicles and giving them a second life where they can accelerate the transition to renewables. 
But the story of Betteries started already in 2010, when the, but, when the founder of Betteries, Mr. Rainer Hönig, visited Asia, and there he met Professor Yunus. Professor Yunus was awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006, and he made Rainer aware of the difficulties in using an electric vehicle that contains a battery that can be only used to power an electric vehicle. He was very aware of the fact that a multi-purpose battery, so a flexible battery that can cover different types of end uses, would unlock further opportunities linked to e-mobility. His main point was like a battery, it's a very expensive asset and should be used for more than one unique purpose. That idea stayed in the mind of Rainer for many years until in 2018, he founded Batteries. So as uh, Raihan has already presented, battery technology is at the core of e-mobility and at the core of the energy transition towards a renewable energy uh, market. The, therefore, the demand for lithium ion batteries is skyrocketing in the next years and is going to increase even more in the next decade. In this plot, I am trying to highlight the amount of energy that will be required to serve the complete market for immobility, e stationary storage, and other uses that require a lithium ion battery. And if you take a, a detailed look in the year 2030, you will see that passengers and commercial electric vehicles will retain around 85% of the total batteries available in the market. Taking into account the current, um, the current global crisis in the supply chains and the high risks of not having enough raw materials to manufacture those batteries, other sectors, other minus sectors that can, that like can be two-wheelers, three-wheelers, or stationary storage are at danger of not having enough batteries to bring their purposes to an end. At the same time that this demand for lithium-ion batteries is skyrocketing, Slowly, the, light, the batteries coming out of the first electric vehicles on the road are reaching their end of life. As we just saw, the battery, the life expectancy for a battery in an electric vehicle is around eight years or 1,000 miles. That means that we are already receiving the first batteries and the, and the expected number of second life batteries, so batteries that have reached their end of life while using in an electric vehicle, will also increase dramatically in the next years. By 2030, we expect that more than 100 gigawatt hours of storage capacity will be available within these uh, discarded EV batteries. Now, if we bring together the first plot I show you with the demand for lithium ion batteries from smaller sectors, let's call it like this, like the sector covering two and three wheelers and industrial stationary storage, we can see that the second life, uh, the second life battery capacity supply could perfectly match some of those smaller sectors. So somehow guaranteeing a certain amount of lithium ion batteries to be used for those e-vehicles or those stationary applications. However, do not forget that we are calling them used batteries. The automotive industry do not want those batteries anymore and they are discarding them. But why do we think there is a second life there? Well, the electric vehicle has very high demands for those batteries. And when the battery has lost around 30% of the initial capacity, the driver of an electric vehicle starts experiencing like a reduction of the driving range as well as an increase on the charging time. Therefore, automotive industry puts those batteries out of the car, but those batteries have still a huge capacity inside them that could serve other market segments that are not as demanding as an electric vehicle. However, tapping into the left capacity of an electric vehicle battery comes with several challenges. Let me highlight the first of them, which is related to the lack of standards in battery technology. We also just saw in the last presentation that there are plenty of battery chemistries and plenty of battery designs. Almost each automotive company uses a different battery for their electric vehicles. That means that it's very difficult to design a process to dismantle those batteries that it's standard and the same for different types of um, automotive companies. The second important challenge is that the value gap between new and reused batteries should remain large enough 
for the second life batteries to have a chance. That means economy of scale benefits that come out of serial manufacturing are very relevant to keep this value gap. And finally, currently there is a lack of standards and there is a lack of transparency into the battery value chain. When the batteries are acquired by second life manufacturers from the automotive companies, those battery, uh, we do not get any data for those batteries. So we do not know how that battery was behaving in the first life. That is very challenging then to understand how that battery would behave in the second lifetime. At Batteries, since we founded the company in 2010, we have been working in addressing all those challenges and developing a process that delivers affordable, safe, and reliable second life batteries. Let me explain you this uh, uh, circular plot that I put in this slide. So let's start with the battery when it comes out of the electric vehicle with the so-called car pack, which still has more than 70% of the initial capacity left. The challenge comes in how to reuse those batteries. Our objective was to develop a battery, as we said uh, in taking into account the Professor Yunus idea, that can fulfill several sector needs. So we cannot repurpose those batteries as they come out of the car, but we need to dismantle them and reach module level. What we have provided is a strategy that enables us to in, in invest minimum repurposing efforts, but warranty a quality grade, which is high enough to warranty a productive second lifetime. We take seven of these modules and we rebuild them into smaller battery, what we call better packs. These better packs connect, um, include sorry, several sensors that enable us to develop and connected object. This connected object is sending us a lot of data, which enable us to implement a machine learning based battery analytics, providing us the ability to understand what are the most relevant factors determining the aging, so the degradation of a battery. Based on that data, we can implement an advanced operational strategy that minimizes those factors. Finally, once the batteries reach the end of life or end of second life, we take into account that the batteries must be recycled. So we send them to some recyclers and the raw materials recovered are reintroduced into the battery value chain. We have focused in developing a modular system and that's crucial because that allows us to manufacture one unique building block that can be used for many types of purposes. So the building block of our battery, the so-called better pack, is formed by seven battery modules and it includes all the electronics and sensors to monitor it. The better pack is a 2.3 kilowatt hours battery that is mobile and multipurpose. Besides providing a battery, we have also developed system solutions, which means we have developed the required components that the end users of the batteries can use them as plug and play. For the mobility sector, we have developed the so-called better link, which enables the connection and a smooth connection between the battery and the drivetrain. We have also developed a connector so that the battery can be used for different DC powers. And also we have developed the so-called better gen, which is the perfect substitutor for fuel-based generators, enabling having AC power at any place. This is the large, the, sorry, this is the small range capacity of the systems. As I said, as the batteries are modular, they can be stacked on each other. So with one system, we cover from 2.3 to up to 15 kilowatt hours of energy storage capacity. But we have, um, we have been aware that there is a higher demand for larger storage systems. Therefore, we are developing a second line of products following the same philosophy we use for the better packs. In this case, the building block is the so-called better store, which is a cabinet where all the modules and the electronics are cased, and it has a minimum capacity of 30 kilowatt hours. These kind of solutions will be also very useful for the charging stations for the immobility. E At the same time, they can also be encased into a container and then serve as swapping stations where some mobile and stationary batteries are um, are used to provide swappable batteries to, to a fleet of e-vehicles. 
I have also mentioned already that the batteries are connected devices, which means we have developed a business platform, a cloud platform that monitors all those batteries in real time and bring us some advantages. First of all, all the data that the batteries are collecting through the sensors is sent to the cloud where it is analyzed thanks to machine learning algorithms so that we can understand, as I said, the degradation, the most relevant degradation mechanisms and implement a strategy that keeps those degradation mechanisms under control, thus securing an extended second lifetime. We can also track our assets thanks to knowing where they are and how they are operated. And finally, we are implementing a very innovative digital business model platform that enables to, um, on one hand, to fleet operators to monitor their batteries, and on the other, to implement business model based on pay per use. So in this case, a battery does not need to be acquired by the end user, but there is a fleet of batteries available, and the end users will pay only for the energy consumed or for, uh, for the days that the batteries have been used. But in this way, we can eliminate the high initial investment associated to buying a battery. Keeping in mind from the very beginning the idea of developing a multi-purpose system, as I said, we have developed a battery that can be swapped out of the electric vehicle and put it either in the better gen or use either the connector for DC purposes and power any type of productive use, any type of vehicle and be used for multiple applications. In this way, we maximize the impact of that battery. This is indeed our main aim to provide an impact not only in terms of CO2 avoided, but also bring some benefits to the local population. Each battery that replaces a fuel-based generator can avert almost nine tons of CO2 over the, the entire lifetime of the generator. For an electric vehicle like a three-wheeler, uh, we can avert more than 14 tons of CO2 per entire lifetime. A very interesting factor as well that helps to reduce CO2 emissions is that using giving batteries a second lifetime will cut the emissions associated to the electric vehicles. The battery is the component of an electric vehicle with the largest carbon footprint. So addressing sustainable development goal seven, that is bringing affordable and clean energy to all, will also um, extend the benefits beyond this SDG and also impact others like Sustainable Development Goal 1, 12 and 13. Batteries was founded around four years ago and in this time we have been able to build more than 100 better packs, better packs and test them in different types of applications with several pilot customers. During this time, we have collected more than 6 million of operational data points for our battery analytics platform. We are very glad to say that certification, serial production and sales are imminent and we expect them to occur in the next weeks. As I also said, we are developing a larger storage capacity system based on the better cabinet. And for this, we have already started the development and we plan to run some pilot projects already during this year. Um, batteries is not only a battery provider, but also a system solution integrator. And we have had already some experiences in integrating our batteries in other electric vehicles. For example, the vehicle I'm showing in the slide is a three-wheeler that has been designed for emerging markets. This, full ve this vehicle, we have done a full adaptation and integration, including the driving train, to incorporate two of our batteries. In this case, the, one of the batteries will be powering the engine of the vehicle and the other battery is providing power on board. This vehicle will be tested very soon in Zambia in cooperation with an NGO called S SOS uh, Children Villages. And the last example of integration in this case is not an integration, but is a retrofit. We have a cooperation with one company that distributes this very known vehicle in Europe, the Piaggio Ape, which is a vehicle, a three-wheeler used for load carrying and a promotional tool. And what we have done is retrofit this uh, combustion engine with two of our batteries, plus two additional batteries to provide as well power on board. So 
Um, let me summarize the complete presentation by showing you what we believe are our most relevant USPs. On one hand, our batteries, as I said, are multi-purpose. This is crucial to generate the highest impact possible because diversifying the type of productive uses, that brings a very big impact to the community. Batteries are modular, meaning we can manufacture one system to cover many different uh, application ranges. This reduces a lot the manufacturing uh, cost, enabling us to deliver an affordable system. Swappable batteries are ideal for smaller e-mobility solutions because they are small and lightweight, and they address straight away two of the most relevant challenges associated to transitioning to e-mobility, which is the ranch anxiety and the waiting times for charging. Connected systems result in digital payments and paper use opportunities, as well as an artificial intelligence driven operation, reducing, um, reducing any safety issues and securing a very reliable operation. As I said, substituting any type of fuel-based engine or a diesel-based generator by a battery has large impacts on the environment, as well as using Second Life batteries reduces drastically the carbon footprint of an electric vehicle. And finally, this type of multipurpose batteries have a wider impact beyond e-mobility. Let me finish with a video, which I think is the best way to see how easy it is to swap these batteries? This is the vehicle I showed you before. It's a three-wheeler that has been designed for the rough uh, conditions of African roads. You will see that this is still the older model because there is only one battery inside, but still the, the swapping process remains the same and you will see this is extremely easy. And that's it, batteries has been swapped, which means the car is still fully charged and can run away again with the full range. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nuria. Uh, really interesting. Uh, yeah, what you said before, the questions will be after the last speaker. So if you stay here, then uh, I'm sure there will be interesting questions for you. But for now, I want to go to uh, Swami, Sina Trufat. Uh, she will do also a presentation about uh, their battery options and uh, technology. And I'm sure also something about swapping. Uh, after your presentation, my colleague Sasha will take over to moderate the Q&A session. Uh, yes, I already see your presentation on the screen. So, go ahead, Sina. Perfect. Thanks so much, Edwin. And uh, hi, everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, my name is Sina. I work as Wobby's International Expansion Manager. And I would like to give you a brief overview of uh, what we do with batteries and battery swapping infrastructure. So at Swabi, our mission really is to lead the battery swapping revolution by building up a network of battery uh, swapping stations for future mobility. And behind all of that is our main belief that clean, accessible and affordable energy should really be accessible to everyone everywhere. Uh, we come from the battery world ourselves. So a few years ago, we developed and certified the Green Pack battery, which is now used by electric cargo buys, um, among others also by Audi, DPD, DHL, and Hermes. Um, and now we are a team of 40 plus employees, uh, actually based out of Berlin, uh, with most people working in the software and embedded engineering um, and in the expansion team. Um, the problem that we try to solve is the lack of charging infrastructure for light electric vehicles. So while we had a really big boom in light electric vehicles with kick scooters, e-bikes, e-cargo bikes, and e-mopeds, there's still no standard or universal charging um, infrastructure to safely charge all those different batteries. And that lack of infrastructure leads to a set of problems. Um, Nuria already mentioned a few, right? Um, the range anxiety, uh, lack of range is one. 
safety is a big part. Um, batteries can heat up and they can start burning. So it's, it's very important that they're safely charged. Uh, and maybe another one to highlight are indeed the, the high operational costs that come with the waiting times of traditional charging when you plug in your vehicle, but also then the redeployment uh, of the vehicles on the road. So out of these problems, uh, we created the Swabby Station, which is the first multi-modular battery swapping station uh, in Europe. Um, you can imagine it as a kind of a server rack that covers one square meter with different kinds of modules. We have a power module here on the top. Then we have different modules to charge different kinds of batteries. And we have a climatization module at the bottom, which can either heat up or cool um, the battery compartment. Um, so we offer that, the infrastructure, but we also offer the batteries in a rental mode. And with our solution, what we want to enable our customers to do is to swap batteries uh, in seconds rather than having to wait hours for, for a charged battery. Um, also, with Swabby, uh, users can rely on the network of, of charging stations instead of having to rent expensive warehouses in the cities uh, where the batteries can be charged. We also enable cost savings that uh, come from the um, longer life cycle of batteries and the reduction of, of the OPEX and the CAPEX, which comes from you initially by the batteries. And then on top of that, um, we are continuously monitoring the batteries. So we communicate with the batteries and we are always tracking the temperature, the state of health, the state of charge, and any error codes, uh, among others. Then as our most important uh, value is this open system. Uh, so we really uh, are not exclusive with just one battery manufacturer, but actually open to a range of different battery manufacturers. Um, that means we also continuously integrate new batteries into the system. Um, and here you can see how our uh, solution works in action. Um, currently, we're present at gas stations, supermarkets, uh, public places, and basically wherever uh, our customers meet us. And those are the five key needs that we meet, right? Uh, so we want to uh, enable cost reductions um, on the one hand side by lowering the cost for charging, uh, but also um, moving the cost of purchasing batteries away by just renting the batteries from us. Um, the next one is safety. Uh, we have a fire um, hazard management system that's integrated in our stations uh, and our stations are also certified by the German Institute for Applied Fire Safety Research. Um, we want to boost the uptime of our customers uh, with battery swapping, so seconds instead of, instead of hours, um, and boosting the range. And last but not least, we um, unlock the cities because we give access to all kinds of different um, locations in city centers where we take care of the location scouting and the setup of the stations and then the handover uh, to the end user. This is an overview of the batteries that we currently have uh, available. Um, here on the left, you can see uh, the batteries that we have actually integrated in the Swabby station. Um, so among others, the green pack, of course, and we have two larger batteries for electric mopeds, that's Kumpan and Torot. And then we have three smaller batteries, um, Segway 9 bot Okai A and Okai B, that are used for e-bikes and e-kick scooters. And the newest addition to the family is the IS e-bike um, battery. And on the other side, we have a set of batteries that we have not yet integrated in the station, but that we also uh, rent out. Uh, those are the ones that you can see here, um, which are compatible with Yamaha and Bosch drive systems. And we don't just offer hardware, um, but we also have a software solution. Uh, so we do station management on the one hand side and battery management on the other hand side. With station management, it's just meant that we are continuously tracking uh, the charging. Um, we provide remote maintenance and service on the stations and also utilization data on the station. On the battery front, um, we communicate with the batteries. So each of the batteries has their own battery management system. Um, we are adapted to that and we can take out that data, uh, which we then make available in, in our battery database. All this data gathered together um, is in our operator dashboard, which uh, we offer to all our customers. Um, and we also have a user app that's actually um, used to swap the batteries. So it's a map where you can see all the stations, you can reserve batteries, and you drive to the station, and you just scan the QR codes and you swap your battery, a bit like we saw in, in Bogoro's video earlier. We have two business models, uh, charging as a service and battery as a service. In charging as a service, we simply charge the batteries of customers, so they're not our own batteries. 
um, and those are usually exclusive stations that are dedicated to that one customer and the payment is structured in a paper swap model. In battery as a service, we offer the charging infrastructure for the swabby stations, but also the batteries. Um, and that is structured in a monthly subscription model. Um, and here we actually enable battery sharing. So it could be that two companies in logistics, for example, Hermes and uh, DHL, they're sharing the same kind of batteries in our, in our station network. Uh, today we have access to more than 5,000 uh, locations in Europe, but we're also really looking forward to expand into Latin America, Africa, North America, um, and India. Um, of course, we're not doing all of that alone. Uh, we work together with different partners in our ecosystem. Uh, for location partners, we work together with um, Coa Parking, BP, and Shell, among others, um, which allows us to set up the stations very quickly in the range of different locations uh, around the world. And then we also work together with some of the biggest uh, light electric vehicle OEMs like Okai and Segway Nanbot uh, and some of the leading battery manufacturers. Um, and that's really key for us because that's where we um, get all the battery specifications that allow us to safely charge those batteries in our stations. And uh, our customers, um, this is just a subset, but um, we are uh, really looking forward to, uh, to expand uh, our customer base. And uh, so far, Tia Digital Express Hermes CD are some of our, our biggest customers. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. I look forward to your questions. And uh, back to you, Edwin. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, not Edwin, I'm taking over from Edwin uh, in the moderation uh, now. Uh, thank you very much, Sina, for this uh, insightful presentation into uh, battery swapping uh, by Swobby. I think this is uh, the time in this uh, in this webinar that we uh, move to the questions. Um, I believe that I have only one question about technical issues. Um, and here I can uh, urge you all to uh, uh, think of the questions that you want to ask uh, to Nuria and to Sina, uh, and post them either in the uh, post them in the question box that you have. In the go to webinar tool. And I also want to uh, highlight to all the panelists that they can uh, they can ask their questions if they have any. So we'll give you all a minute to uh, to type up your questions. In the meantime, I can uh, I can ask a question uh, to Nuria that uh, that I was wondering myself um, uh, about uh, the battery packs that you have. Um, how heavy is one module? Is it uh, is it very heavy to uh, to swap it? Do you have to be very strong to uh, operate it? I can do it my own if that's a reference. So um, one better pack it's between it's around thirty five kilos more or less. So it's um, it's not light, but it can be done by one person. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Also a reminder for the other panelists that the, uh, oh, I see now questions coming in. I wasn't looking right. First question is, is it possible to share the slides with us? I think uh, uh, that's a question to Nuria and to uh, uh, Sina, and I hope that uh, that's, that's all right with you. Yes, the slides can definitely be shared. Thank you. I can't share all of them because there are some models that are from our customers, like the electric vehicles, but I could share some that the internal ones, that's not a problem. Okay, thank you very much. We'll make sure that afterwards, uh, all the slides that can be shared will be shared. Uh, and for the battery swapping, Tina, is there any, are there any calculations done with battery swapping? Um, I'm guessing uh, in respect to the distance that you have to drive with it and uh, what type of vehicle can take out what kind of battery? Mm, you mean uh, calculations with regards to the cost savings or the time required to deviate from your route to swap batteries? 
<laughs> I, I, I was thinking a letter, but both could be, yeah. Um, yeah, so what we have envisioned um, is that um, for battery swapping to work large scale, um, at least for the B2B customers. So let's say we take um, two sectors and B2B logistics and shared mic mobility. They would need a station every one and a half kilometers. So in a radius of one and a half kilometers, there would need to be a station because else drivers would have to deviate too much from their route. Um, so for a city of Berlin, um, that's realistic. Um, it, it really depends, of course, on the city and the density uh, of vehicles. Um, but um, yeah, we are gathering data on that. It's very much in the pilot stage still. So we don't really know yet how um, to incentivize the user, right? From which moment on would the user not deviate from the route anymore to swap batteries. Um, that's something that our customers are figuring out right now, um, and they're trying to gather data on that. Uh, but that's still very, very early stage. Yeah. Um, maybe also interesting to know um, for anyone in, sh in shared mic mobility, right now it's still the customers themselves that are swapping the batteries. So it be someone employed by Tier that drives around with a cargo bike and collects all the empty batteries, swaps them in one go, and then redistributes the full batteries. So it's not yet the end user that is actually performing the swapping. Um, of course, that would be the end goal, um, but um, you have to see how you can incentivize the end user. And also, of course, you need to have this very big coverage um, with the infrastructure um, to make that yeah. possible. Yeah. I can understand. Thank you. Good question. A uh, question to uh, uh, Nuria. Um, what is the communication protocol that you use to send battery information to the cloud? That's a very technical question. I, I, I can't, I don't want to say a word that it's the wrong one. So, um, but the data is sent to the cloud. So the BMS talks to a unit, which is what we call the BMU, the battery management unit. That's our own unit. Um, then the battery management unit is connected to the cloud. So, I mean, we use sometimes Wi-Fi when Wi-Fi is available. Otherwise we use GSM. The, the batteries have a connectivity based on GSM so that they can always be sending data. And there is also the possibility to store data locally for cases without no connectivity. And once the data is on the cloud is where we carry out all the analysis. So it's not a edge um, analysis, but it's based on data. The exact protocol for data communication um, I would need to check. I understand. Very technical question indeed, but uh, good explanation. Thank you. Interesting that the data is stored offline before uh, for sent to the cloud if there's no internet. Very, very good addition there. Uh, next question for Sina. Um, it's a bit of a longer question. I'll read it out. How would your system manage the increased number of different battery models and designs coming into the market? Interestingly, I don't see any of the common e-motorcycle batteries now common in Africa in your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good question. I think you've hit the nail on its head. The fragmentation is, is really one of the biggest problems to solve. Um, um, not just because it makes it harder for anyone managing fleets or for us in this case, building swapping infrastructure, but also if you talk about uh, recycling, um, it would be way easier if we all had one standard battery type, uh, which we could recycle um, and instead of managing a pool of many different batteries. Um, and for us as well, we, of course, we want to integrate the most used batteries and the ones that are that are adhering to the, the safety regulations, uh, but we don't want to integrate every single battery. Um, so right now um, we have these seven integrated batteries. Um, we are evaluating a few other batteries that are in the motorcycle space. Uh, we recently joined the swappable batteries uh, motorcycle um, composium of uh, Piaggio, Honda, um, they're among in there, uh, Yamaha. Um, so we are working on standardization, um, but we are, of course, not there yet. Um, I think in the e-bike space, you can say there is more or less standard battery that's Bosch, which you see a lot uh, on the street. But um, for motorbikes and e-cargo, uh, it's still a really long way to go. Um, so what we generally do is we, we are in touch with our customers and with the battery manufacturers um, trying to work on standardization and also offer vehicle OEMs support in battery integration when they evaluate which battery uh, to choose uh, for their system. Yeah, but it's indeed a really big challenge and still a really long way to go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the insight. And then we stay with, uh, with you, Sina, for the next question. Um, what is the setup cost for a swappable battery system? 
Um, so we don't sell our stations. Um, we um, basically offer them in the battery subscription. So if you rent batteries from us, uh, say the green pack battery, um, when we see, okay, there's an, a big enough pool of battery in that area, in that location, we will set up a swabby station and that's actually included in the rental price for the battery. Um, and for charging as a service, um, if you don't rent batteries from us, but you want to keep ownership of your batteries and just have a charging solution, um, we will um, offer you a, a paper swap price that's anywhere between 60 cents to a euro, depending on uh, the utilization. Um, maybe that to know, um, and, and that includes the setup. So Swabi sets up the station, we uh, enter an agreement with um, the location partner to which we pay rent. Uh, we also cover the electricity uh, and the insurance of the batteries when they're in the Swabi station. Okay, thank you, very clear. And then the follow-up question there is, is um, also with your cloud data collection, who is responsible for that? Is it yourself or is it the, the client? Uh, no, we do that. Uh, so we don't track the batteries when they're not in the station. That's maybe important to know. Um, the point of contact is when actually the station, uh, the, the batteries come back into the station um, and that data is collected by us and made available in, in the battery database. Yeah. So you get access to the data. Yeah. Okay, thank you. This was actually a question to both. So I'll go to Nuria for the, the same. You already talked about the, the cloud options. Um, and the, the first question also for batteries. Uh, so what are the cost implications of the system that you have? So what are the costs of the, uh, the battery system? Mm -hmm. Let me answer then the communication protocol because now I checked, I had time to check. MQTT, uh, it's the standard communication protocol for IoT devices. So we follow that one. Um, this is how the data is gathered in the cloud. Um, the yeah, <laughs> the cost um, we we share we we sell batteries in a B two B model, so we don't have batteries B two C. Our idea is to provide with e vehicles providers with our batteries, and they can decide how to whether they integrate them as swappable or they integrate them as a fixed battery into the vehicle. This is an option for them. Um, I can't give us exact price because, as I said, this would depend strongly on the um, on the fleet operator, so the number of vehicles for sure, or the number of purposes. But the idea is um, that the, the the final user of the battery, which is the final user of the e-vehicle or of the appliances where the battery would be plugged, is just paying in a battery as a service business model. So we can track how much energy has been consumed, and then you would pay for kilowatt hour. Or the other option is a rental model that you would pay per days that you take the battery out of the swapping station. But um, I can't give a final price for the consumer because that wouldn't be um, what we would be deciding. But I may assume that would depend a lot on the cost of the energy in the grid because most probably it would be associated to the grid tariff that the owner of the battery pays. I understand. Thank you. Uh, then I go to the next question. And I think this question is for Nuria. Um, what information do you need to calculate the best battery for an e-vehicle? I think it determines the, the size of the, the batteries uh, it's meant here. Yeah, there's there's very different challenges in deciding what is the best use for a second life battery. The first challenge is that we don't have data from the first life. Right. I mean, we get a battery and we, we can measure the capacity of that battery when it comes out of the car, but we don't know what has happened for that battery. We don't even know if it was used in, I don't know, Sweden or in Greece, where you would expect a very different degradation state because of the temperatures, right? So that's the first challenge. Then, of course, what we are doing now is using those batteries for many different types of purposes, like besides e-vehicles, as I said, for any type of productive use, um, for any type of toolings that uh, they use different powers. And out of all that data, we are analyzing that with machine learning models and trying to understand what are the most relevant degradation mechanisms and to what are they associated? Are they associated to high temperatures? Are they associated to very high uh, power peaks? Are they associated to a certain charging strategy? And once we are able to understand those, then we will be able to say, okay, this battery better goes to this uh, end use because of the initial degradation stage, or this battery should be treated in this way because the outside temperature is always very high or very low, whatever. So this will be a permanent learning process. We have some hints right now, thanks to the data we already have, 
but still um, we, we will be learning a lot. What we can do, of course, and what we do already is to uh, the charging strategy we do is totally already controlled. I mean, we do not charge batteries. Let's say fast charging, for instance, uh, destroys batteries. This is something we know, right? So we are implementing a, a charging strategy that still enables to have a fleet of charged batteries at place always. But the charging protocol, it's very well analyzed that it doesn't uh, accelerate the aging of the battery. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, the next question is also uh, to you, Nuria. It's a bit of a longer question, so I'll read it out. Um, in this evolution and integral improvements of the accessibility and lifetime of batteries, how are you aligning the demands of users, vehicle manufacturers, battery manufacturers, city managers, uh, among others? It's the first part of the question. How we are aligning, sorry? Yeah, how you are. How are you aligning the demands? So the, the different players, the different stakeholders um, that are involved here. So vehicle manufacturers, battery manufacturers, city managers, energy suppliers in, in the cities. Are okay, you taking any effort to align these, uh, align these different I don't see how we could align the battery manufacturers with the energy suppliers in cities. Um, what we do, our, our own value chain starts with the automotive industry. So we acquire our batteries from the OEMs. Um, our partner right now, and this is this can be visit, is Mobilize, which is a company uh, part of Renault. So all the batteries we are using come out of Renault cars, and we have already secured enough batteries for the next year. So that's our beginning, let's say, of the story. And then we sell batteries, as I said, to fleet operators. Ideally, and this is part of our communications or our, uh, what we would like to bring also, is that how you charge the battery, it also influences a lot um, the carbon footprint of the battery. So batteries should be charged with renewables energy. If we keep charging the batteries with grid energy, as the grid it is right now, for instance, in Germany, where we sit, the carbon footprint of the battery is not zero. So it's not a zero emissions vehicle because you use a battery. It depends on how you charge the battery, how much CO2 you are indirectly somehow uh, releasing when you drive the vehicle. So. Ideally, of course, we would like to be in this energy value chain and play our role and try to push everything towards renewables. But um, at this point, we are not in contact with uh, cities or any energy suppliers in Europe. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, Sina, next question is, uh, is for you. Uh, I believe that you presented uh, in Europe where Sobi is active uh, currently. Is uh, uh, Sobi also interested or already working on expansion outside of Europe? Yeah, definitely. Um, so while our network is um, in Europe, um, we have both stations uh, in Germany right now, uh, actually in Berlin. <laughs> so we're not doing Nuria, it would be nice to do the VG there. But um, we are also um, doing projects outside of Europe. Uh, for example, in Indonesia, um, we have a pilot um, and we are always also open to different modes of collaboration, right? Um, so it could be indeed the renting out of stations or purchase of stations or joining for a project. Um, we're definitely interested in that. Um, so um, it's also on our roadmap uh, for the next uh, five years uh, to move outside of Europe. So definitely uh, just get in touch with me uh, after this. Uh, definitely be interested to hear um, about your project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have uh, uh, one last question in here uh, that's, I think, already mentioned in one of the previous, but uh, I'd like to check it uh, with both of you. Uh, so maybe Sina first. Um, are there any cost implications for the cloud integration? For the, 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 uh, so the... An extra cost, an extra cost uh, component um, for the cloud integration. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, maybe just two different things, um, but the communication between uh, batteries and our station, uh, which feeds into the battery database, there are no cost implications for that. Um, but then also, if you're a micromobility company with your own user app, we have an open API that can be integrated, uh, and we also support in that. And also for that, there's no extra cost that is included in either a battery rental or the charging as a service. Yeah. OK, very clear. Uh, Nudia? For you the same question it, the cost for integrating the batteries in the vehicles is that the question the cloud the cloud integration the, ah the cloud excuse me i couldn't understand properly no worries. yeah <laughs> so no so far there's no cost associated to the cloud but of course we at some point we would like to monetize that part as well because we are collecting data 
permanently since the battery is in operation. So most probably we will probably develop some tailored uh, applications for certain users, like as I said, fleet operators or for example, mini grid operators, if we think of another context where they can use the batteries as a swapping station. So they require probably a lot of data for reparability purposes, then we would think of those type of, of schemes. But at this point, we mostly collect our data for our own internal purposes. And, and to provide to understand better how the batteries are operated. I can provide an example, for instance, that we are doing some pilot tests here in Europe with some filming companies because the filming companies in Europe uh, have a very good, uh, have a very strong regulation regarding the CO2 emissions of the filming sets. And this is something we provide them additionally, like the CO2 avoided during the filming of a movie. So this is something we can calculate. So that would be a, an additional cloud cost, definitely. Good example. Good example. Thank you very much. Um, I have no other questions uh, in my screen. Um, so I want to thank you uh, both very much. Uh, Sina from uh, Sobi and Nuria from Batteries. And Leon as well from uh, Fear for uh, giving the overview uh, presentation in the beginning. Um, Lydia for the presentation on the uh, startup incubator uh, and uh, all the other uh, people from the Solution Plus team that worked, uh, worked hard to uh, make this uh, training week happen and uh, with this first webinar this week. So um, also the attendees, thank you very much. I see there's still uh, 32 attendees here. So uh, I hope you all uh, enjoyed and learned something uh, in this session. Uh, I think if you have any questions afterwards, um, don't hesitate to send these. Uh, I think both Sina and Nuria uh, shared their contact details uh, at the end of their presentation and we will share what we can with from the presentation with you so uh, uh, don't hesitate to get in contact with uh, with us or with them uh, if you have any questions then uh, thank you all and then uh, we will uh, stop recording this uh, this webinar and uh, good luck and uh, enjoy the rest of this uh, this training this week Thanks for the invitation. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye-bye.